Bombay Das, absolutely gorgeous Yasmin Karachi Wala. I know most of you will already know her, but I will still give you a very short introduction about what Yasmin does. She's been a part of the fitness industry for more than 25 years. She's the most sought after celebrity fitness trainer. Being the first Basi certified Pilates instructor in India, she is the proprietor of her own personal fitness studio, Yasmin's Body Image. Yasmin is the lady who has made Pilates the gem it is today and who is behind most of Bollywood's biggest stars fitness. So Yasmin, please tell us where did your journey start from? You know, Pari, it's really um, surprising and it, is, it always surprises a lot of people to know that as a, as a young kid, maybe like even before I was 10 or in my teens, I used to be so lazy. I hated doing anything physical. I mean, literally, like literally hated doing anything physical. My mom used to try to put me in athletics in school and I would make an excuse every morning before going because my stomach was hurting or my head was hurting or I could never say I had fever because I don't get fever, fortunately. But mm -hmm. at that time, I hated it that I never put like onions under my armpit in the night and slept. So I would wake up with fever and things like that. And I would just, I just hated moving. And my mom, poor thing, my mom and dad were both very active. Uh, we used to live at Haji Ali. So they used to go to the race course and my dad would try to like make me walk with him and I would end up jogging because he walked so fast that I hated it. The mm. only thing I participated in school was in short putt and javelin in sports because you had to do some kind of sport because it it required strength and not much of foot movement or you know agility and i used to take part in the march past because okay. you uh, because i was you know taller than most of the girls in my class i got to hold the school flag and things like that so i was very excited to do stuff you know which uh, uh, I didn't require too much movement. Walking was okay. Walking was as, mm. as much as I could do. But at home, I didn't even do that. Like I, if, you know, you have servants in the house and right. as a kid, I used to take full advantage of them and tell them to get me water, or get a book, which I'd left in my bedroom and I was sitting in the living room and my mom would always yell at me. But you never listen to your mother, right? Growing up, only right. when you grow older and wiser, you realize mom was right. But anyway, having right. said that, when I was in college, my best friend was dating a boy and she wanted to kind of look, you know, nice and pretty and sexy and uh, in shape and whatever. So she forced me to join a gym because there was a deal at a local gym near a new spa that had opened up near our, mm. uh, near our place, which was two for the price of one. And, you know, as college kids, your mother, your parents will never give you money to go into something and uh, work out. And especially my mom would never give me money because I would join badminton and go for like two days. I made my dad buy me a cycle saying I'll cycle to the station every day to go to college and did it for exactly one day. And uh, so we joined this gym. And she knew exactly what she wanted to do. And to the weight section, I looked at the weights like they were aliens. And I saw these people doing some dance, which was aerobics. And I said, oh, I'm a super dancer and I'll go here. And this is my thing. I've gone into the class and didn't realize how uncoordinated I was. I <laughs> couldn't keep up with the class. I couldn't follow instructions. When the instructor was saying, go right, I would be going left. Uh, I mean, it was like as if I was suddenly dyslexic as well. I went she was saying knee up I was kicking I think I kicked a couple of people in my class on the first day and got the worst look from people at the end of the class people really looked at me like I am the alien right like where have you come from I felt so um, embarrassed that I decided that I had to keep going back and master this like it was like how can I be bad at something and so bad where people have literally laughed and snickered at me so I kept going back to the class and I kept going back to the class and doing it. And, and I had a thing I wanted to stand in the front and front of the mirror and people would be like, can you just go to the back? Because you don't know. And I was like, no, no, I'll learn it. I'll learn it. I'll learn it. And, and I would walk in late to the class. So I would walk in late, but go to the front of the class and do some Dada Giri, which I'm very good at. And, 
<laughs> and get the dirtiest look. One day the instructor was unwell and she called me up at home. Of course, that was way before the time of mobiles and said, I'm not feeling well. Can you teach my class? I was like, what do you mean? Can you teach my class? I don't know how to teach a class. She's like, just go. My cassettes are lying there. That was the days of cassettes, right? And just play any cassette and do whatever comes to your mind. So I was like, okay, how difficult can that be? And uh, actually I was petrified. And I went and I put on a cassette. I told the class, listen, guys, I don't know what I'm going to do, but she's told me to do this. So I'm doing this. And they've all looked at me like, oh no, like this disaster. <laughs> Anyway, I went up in the front of the class stood where she used to stand and started teaching and realized that I knew all the, all the movements. And right. not only did I know all the movements, I could instruct through it because I think I'd been hearing her for so long that I was saying the same words and, and telling people what to do. And I realized, oh God, I love this. I love telling people what to do, as you know. Uh, from our trip that yes. people, I'm always <laughs> telling people and what everybody to listens to you well thank god but yeah <laughs> but, so that's how it began and then I just realized that I was going to America after college for a uh, camp for a summer camp where I was teaching and my instructor said to me hey you're going nobody in India is really certified you know we all just mm. see Fonda why don't you there's this ACE certification and why don't you go do that and I was like yeah okay when I didn't know anything and I could become an instructor, how difficult is it to be a certified instructor, right? And so I went and it was a shock because I was an economic student and I had to learn science. Oh, God. And it was the most difficult thing to do. The first time I gave my test I, exam, I failed because the passing is 80%. Okay? And I got 75 or 73%. And I was like, so I had to redo the exam and I like didn't tell anybody back home that I failed because I was so embarrassed. Later, I learned that a lot of people don't make it the first time. And in okay. those days when fitness was not such a big thing, you know. Right. But yeah, that's how it began. And I just started teaching because it was extra pocket money. I went to do the course because my instructor said, I'm eternally thankful to her. But, it, mm. you know, I just went because I was going to America and do this course and it sounds good. And that means staying away from home for another six months, which was, you know, didn't hurt at that time as you know in your 20 in your early 20s you want right. to go party so I used to party and study and teach and all of that so that's how it began I'm sorry a very long no, story that, but very interesting but trust me it doesn't look like you could have been lazy because you are anything but lazy <laughs> yeah a lot of people say that till they meet my mother and when they meet my mother, my mother has horrifying stories to say about me. I'm just saying it very nicely. <laughs> so as a wellness and fitness enthusiast, what is your vision? What, what do you think should happen in the near future? Do you mean in the wellness and fitness space? In, yes, in the wellness and fitness so space. So I feel like... You know, for me, over the years, it's become really important for me to encourage the people around me to be fit, to think of wellness, to think of fitness, to think of their well-being, uh, to eat mindfully, to move mm. mindfully. And as you know, like we were on a trip together and it just comes automatically. It's not like I'm preaching or I'm saying eat right. this and don't eat that. But, and I, I don't even tell people don't eat, right? But when I see that people are eating mindlessly, you know, I just meet, I just point it out to them. Right. I, I just feel that, and especially after COVID and, you know, after what we've been through with our in, immunity and after what we've been through uh, with so many people around us falling sick or, you know, passing away, I just feel like, it's a time for us to wake up and literally uh, be aware of what we are and what we aren't doing. Right. So Have what do you feel are the new trends in wellness that people are now beginning to follow? So, you know, uh, I have never really been a person who follows trends because trends come and go, right? Mm -hmm. What's trending now doesn't necessarily be, uh, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for you, 
or it's okay. gonna be for me when i look at fitness and wellness i look at things that are good that are here to stay right for me it's a lifestyle for me it's more of people understanding their bodies and what's going to work for them and that's different it's it's different mm. for me it's different from you i never preach to people what they should or should not do whether it's eating patterns whether it's moving patterns whether it's lifestyle patterns right but all i tell people is be aware and be mindful of what you're doing right if you're right. if you're a person who sleeps late and wakes mm. up late that's okay but make sure that the sleep that you're getting is good quality sleep and if you're pers- a person who sleeps early and wakes up early that's you know it's it's yeah. each individuals uh you know a uh, circadian rhythm and it's different okay. for each one of us and of course where as trends come it's always fun to include so what i do is when trends come in i always include them in my fitness like right now i don't know uh somebody the other day asked me if i knew about the happy workout the joy workout okay. and uh-huh. i was like okay what okay. does that even mean so i have literally gone and googled and what it meant was just moving your body joyfully uh, so okay. like swaying or you know bending or like with and i'm like yeah but that's what you're supposed to do anyway you know and they've made it a workout or like animal flow comes in right it's a great right. way to move uh because you're moving in but it's not for everybody because if if it's a big person who needs to get down on all fours it is going to be difficult so i think right. people need to assess their own bodies and the trends and see what's going to work for yeah. them and what is going to become a lifestyle right for me fitness is not a one stop it's not a right. destination it's a journey so which what are the things from fitness wellness that you can take on your journey with you so what is a day in the life of yasmin karachi wala look like oh god a uh, hectic hectic and more hectic so mm-hmm. i i love to pack my days with a zillion things right and uh, i am a late riser i wake okay. up uh, i am a late sleeper as well and a late riser but that's okay because i get my good 6 to 7 hours of deep sleep and i start my day with working and a cup of coffee and uh, i'm at the studio working in the middle we have different things that we do so between training clients and doing online and doing my own workout there's always right. an hour slot in my first half of the day that is slotted for me nobody else gets that time it's my workout time and uh, from there we always have some shoot or the other some interview or right. the other so trying to in my workout clothes and in my hair tied up and me looking like a total mess trying to look little presentable Never. today like i told Never. you i wanted to be pretty for you but there was no time i've just walked not at all up. you even in your work clothes with your hair tied up you look pretty so you don't have to worry about Thanks. that sorry you're too kind but yeah and then <laughs> there's lunch there's i take my i take my little dog to the to work with me because okay. i'm always at work and my son started working with me so we working and i'm very mindful about the food that i eat so my right. day will always my week will always be planned with my meals and luckily i'm fortunate enough to have help at home that prepares my meal but it's always planned it's always made into a schedule so i know what right. time what food is coming and it arrives and i'm eating you know the way i'm supposed to eat without skipping meals or then skipping meals and eating a big meal and then Okay. I try to finish work by about six thirty-seven. Ah, uh, I do an online class with my instructors in the U.S. twice a week because I feel okay. like it, it's it's like uh, it's like uh, food for my brain because when you work with your instructors, then they're still keeping you in check, right? Because right. here Absolutely. I'm the boss. There's nobody who's senior than me to check what I'm doing. So I like to be kept in check, and I like to. know that the work that i'm teaching is still authentic so i keep uh, if i can't travel then twice a week i train with my instructors 
and then I go for a walk in the evening, which is a must because that's just like a chill walk with my friends. We catch up on what's happening. We're walking very briskly in our chill walk, mm. but we catch up on what's happening, what we've missed in each other's life. Come home, eat dinner, oh, yeah. and three hours of TV. Oh, TV! What do you watch? Yeah, Netflix. Oh, okay. Netflix. What are you binge watching? That that is in my in my quick bite. So we'll we'll save that. I know Anatomy of a Scandal. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just finished Lincoln Lawyer, and huh. I'm currently binge watching Anatomy of a Scandal, which is amazing. Really? Okay, good. I'm also a binge watcher, but I watch K drama. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yasmin, you have been training stars for many years. So are there any expectations and any pressures that you feel working with all these stars? There are many expectations. There are always expectations because they are always playing different roles. They have different yeah. requirements for the way they want to look or they're going for an award function or like just right. like went to Khan. And, you know, she was doing the movie. And so there are always expectations, but I don't feel pressure because I love what I do. So for hmm. me, when they have expectations and they put the expectations onto me, it becomes a challenge. And, right. you know, it becomes something for me to work towards. And it's always more fun to plan my workouts and how we're going to do it and how we're going to achieve, you know, uh, okay. where, what, they, what, what, what they expect to be looking like. Right. It's always fun for me. And, uh, the only person who tries to stress me out is Katrina because okay. she will say uh, from the time we start training to the time that we're supposed to reach our goal, she's never satisfied. So she's like, but yes, we've not reached it. But yes, we're not working. But yes, this is not happening. And I, I'm, I'm a very chill person in life. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'll get you there. But you don't know this is happening. And like, you know, Katrina is a very hyper person. We're both Cancerians, completely different. Right. And I'm very sure that by the time she has to go for whatever she is going for, she's going to look the part that she wants to because she's so hardworking. Right. You know, when I'm, and, and, you know, by the grace of God, all my clients are so hardworking that all I have to do is just like move them and steer them in different directions. So I'm quite right. blessed. <laughs> That's great. So what is the one piece of advice you would like to give to this new breed of fitness trainers? The one th piece of advice that I'd like to give the new lot in the fitness industry is never stop learning. Okay. You know, never, even if you think that you know it all, learn, read, no more. Don't use Google. To read mm. because what happens on Google, anyone who has an opinion and puts out an article comes on Google, right? right? And we don't know which are authentic and which are the ones we need to follow. But study more, study more about fitness, do more anatomy. The more you know the human body, the better you will be able to move your clients. And I think that's been my one ace for lasting three decades in the fitness industry has been because Till today, I don't stop learning. In fact, in August, I'm, I'm going back for a, okay. a seminar to the US. It's a three-day seminar to make all the, you know, the entire trip to the US. But it's just, I'm meeting yeah. people who are in the fitness industry, all professionals, all master instructors. And it's literally when I go there, I feel like a drop in the ocean. You know, like in India, probably I feel like the ocean when I go to the the states and i meet other fitness in instructors i feel like a drop in the ocean and that's great because it's a reality check it it just makes you feel how much more there is in life and in the world and that you still have so much more to learn yeah well that's what makes you so, be yeah, on the top of your game learning guys yeah so that's that's how you manage to remain at the top of your game and uh, um you know the best even after 30 years, still the best. I mean, in an age where... Uh, one off. No, no. I mean, definitely among... No, I think definitely the best. But it's okay. Uh, you're, <laughs> you're being you. humble. You're, you're being humble. But um, in, a, in, a, in a life where color of season changes every time, you're the constant. I so, think I lost you, Pari. You, huh, okay, perfect. You, you didn't listen to all the praises I was giving you, right? 
Okay, good. I I, I feel a little embarrassed by praise. <laughs> okay, so um, what um, what is next for you? What do you want to achieve now? So for me, what's next is to make fitness and wellness a a household thing. Like I hmm. want everyone in the family, with the children, with the parents, with the grandparents, to be doing some form of movement right it doesn't mean big big exercises or long exercises and you know uh working out for an hour for me it's just it's just encouraging people to move and to making people un- and to make people understand how important movement is and mm-hmm. that's that's why i'm writing my book which is coming out end of by the end of this year between diwali and christmas wow and it is um 10 minutes to fitness so it's okay. a book that's encouraging people who don't do anything to at least work out for 10 minutes a day and the book has these exercise formats which are 10 minutes it has a warm up it has a cool down it has pictures with explanation but the best part is it has a qr code so oh. for every exercise stack which i'm calling it a stack every exercise stack of 10 minutes i have a qr code which you go on and you work along with me oh how nice so i'm doing the 10 minute workout and all you have to do is follow me and work out with me so yeah Yeah, and there are about 25 wow i think there are about 25 stacks wow i think i need the first copy because uh I need that code. <laughs> so, you know, Asmin, I think we could just go on and on because there's so much to talk to you about. But the one thing that I remember you said while we were at Suneva was that you are as young as your spine is flexible. Yeah, that is the best thing I have learned in Pilates is what Joseph Pilates said. He right. said you are as young as your spine is flexible and if your spine gets un- like, it, just imagine okay you're mm-hmm. a young person who has a spinal issue how are you mm-hmm. moving right your movements become hampered because yeah. your, your spine is what makes you move from point a to point b yes your legs and yes your arms but if your sp- if, if your legs and arms give pressure your spine's going to contract yeah and you're going to not but if your spine is flexible you can, it, it doesn't mean you need to do acrobatics or gymnastics right. or, you know, uh, major dance, but it just means that you feel life and you feel youth. And that's what Joseph Pilates said. And I totally believe it because uh, I have my mom who comes to work out in the studio. Okay. I have my mom in law who comes to work out in the studio. And all we do is work on their spine. Wow. That, that actually is great advice. You keep your spine flexible and everything else will kind follow of fit in. Place. Well, everything else will follow. So I'm going to now do some very quick bites with you where you can answer in one word or one line. Which is your favorite wellness destination? Suneva. <laughs> okay. Top three destinations on your bucket list? Uh, Bora Bora. Hawaii. Okay. And uh, Himalayas. Oh, nice. Okay, you want to climb? Yeah. One thing without which you will never step out of your home. My credit card. Okay. Snacks which you like to munch on? I actually make my own snacks. So I'll make like these seed bars and I'll make these protein balls with dates and flaxseed and chia seed and things like that. So I have a lot. In fact, that's what I was just eating before we started our interview when I said I wanted to munch. I'd made a seed bar with all the seeds and then I put peanut butter and dark chocolate on it. And it was like like a yummy, chocolatey, peanutty, healthy bar. So that's your secret to looking good all the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> One person you will always look up to. I think it's uh, my mom. Okay. My mom, because I think she's, in fact, you know, I just discovered, I, I discovered something new about her 
uh, every year, let's say that. Mm -hmm. And two days back, I just discovered that uh, uh, she had, my, my brother was put in a Gujarati school because we're Bori mm -hmm. Muslims. And mm -hmm. my mom fought with my dad when she was 16 years old and told him that I will not send my son to a, a Gujarati school. Now, I think by the time my brother went to school, he, she must be 20. So okay. she fought with my dad and I said, I will not send my son to a Gujarati school. I have to put him to a, in an English school. And okay. I will, what I couldn't do, I want my kids to do. And that was my, my, my brother who was a boy. And obviously for me, there was no chance by the time I was born six years later. But my mom quietly went and enrolled me in a nursery, which was an English nursery. And then had to... Uh, you know, bear the brunt and the anger of my uh, father, my grandfather, who she said really, literally, almost threw her back out of the house. Wow. Okay, that's that's amazing. So and we I know, know where this, so. we know where you get that streak from. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so your fitness, your fitness mantra: be fit because you deserve it. Okay. I so just. For yeah, me personally, I think you, be, you are as young as your spine is flexible because I just feel like that sums it all. But yeah. what I tell everyone around me is you need to feel like you deserve to be fit. And that's the reason you need to be fit. You know, not okay, As soon as this interview is over, I'm going for a run. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So must haves in your vanity kit. Under eye concealer. Okay. Uh, Lipstick. That's it. Must have in your wardrobe. Workout clothes and a jacket. Okay. Um, one QB. Pants and a lot of other things, but workout but clothes. All, for sure. all workout. You know, I live in my workout clothes, yeah. right? Even right now, I'm wearing them. Right. You make them look fashionable, so it's okay. One cuisine you love to bring, John. Thai. Okay. And your favorite, okay. And uh, your favorite hobby? Chilling on a beach. Okay. Um, a superpower we you wish you had? You could fly. A crazy rumor you heard about yourself? That I'm born in the United States. Okay. Google, actually, if you Google me, it's huh. like born in the United States. On Where is you are, you are born in Bombay? In Mumbai, yeah. In Mumbai. Mumbai. Okay. Amchi Mumbai. Yes. It's skin... a... Okay. No, no, carry on. You were saying something. It says Yasmin Karachiwala, born in the uh, US on the 4th of July, has four children. Okay. So it's all wrong. Yeah. No, I so... always say my nieces are my daughters, right? So that part could be because I have two daughters who are my okay. nieces and my two okay. sons. But born in the US is like a little... Okay, a skill you would like to master? To be punctual. You're not? Okay. I'm not. I'm so not. No, it's okay. You were only five minutes late for this interview. It's absolutely fine. That's that's acceptable. Yeah, that was after a lot of like making sure. And actually, I walked into the house at eight o'clock. I just needed five minutes to eat something so I wouldn't be munching. Yes, your guilty pleasure. Chocolate. Favorite way to unwind. Favorite cheat meal. Chicken biryani. Okay, nice. Favorite way to unwind. Watch Netflix. Okay. One thing that you never yeah, take for granted. You one liners. Yeah, yeah. This is quick bites. It's perfectly fine. One thing that you never take for granted. My family. Okay. A mantra that you live by. Be true to yourself. Nice. That is, that. those are nice little one-liners. So, um, Yasmin, tell us something about the trip that we had to Suneva. Oh my God, can we go again tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a beautiful trip. And 
not just because the place was so beautiful which it it was out it was absolutely breathtaking and of course everything about soneva from the way they use all the resources and you know right. everything and everything is so healthy everything is they're so conscious about the environment and all of that but even the people there they were so so nice meeting sonu was so refreshing considering he's so busy and yeah. you know for him and and you one did feel the 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 uh uh how do you put it the 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 activity yeah. that he's constantly doing right the busyness right. of him because when he was with us he was so chill and calm like he had not a care nowhere to go and i know mm. you had told us that his time like minute to minute is planned yes. but he was so relaxed and that made you because before he came we were all so edgy right because we <laughs> knew that we had to finish the interview with him in that much time because he was going to be in and out and we couldn't right. mess up and but when he came he just put all of us at ease because we were we i mean you know it felt like he had nowhere to go and he was just yeah. there for us and he was like he gave his time so willingly that it made you feel so comfortable which i think is very special yes, uh besides that exactly. of course the bunch of people that you had chosen to do this trip together like of course pooja and i are friends and we do a lot of work together anshika is my junior and i've known her and you know luke is in the same industry we all know each other but we've never connected and i think somewhere in india you know your profession doesn't allow you to mingle with other professionals because everyone is put in a bracket and we we we, we tag everyone right and we mm. give everyone these things and then it gets very difficult for people to mingle uh, not because of pride i think but just because of the way people perceive us okay. right and i speak about this from experience because pooja and i were put into these two brackets of celebrity nutritionist and celebrity mm. this instructor and we used to meet at umpteen number of events smile say hello you know do that little uh, chit chat which really was senseless chit chat i would say about oh, right. how you doing how's work oh good hey <laughs> hey that, that's it and we never even made the effort to get to know each other because we didn't find the need we were both very right. happy in doing and of course having said that working in bombay is like you're constantly yes. in a race you know you're constantly yes. working you're constantly got different things to do plus we women not only do we ma- manage a profession we manage family we manage exactly. you know uh household problems and stuff like that and we were thrown together pooja and i on a trip to goa and we okay. were in the plane and in the car for like hours together and we just started talking and then realized that we were so similar in so many of our thinking you know we had so many of the same thought processes and we were quite pleasantly surprised to find that and since yeah. then there's never been looking back and we've been the best of friends and you know we do this stuff together and we were right exactly. then and there we were like okay chal let's go live together and we went live together and it shocked the fitness world i know that two people like you know from the same like industry can be such good friends how much right? of messages we both got that how are you and puja together how are you and yas together but it was beautiful and i think the same thing happened on this trip with luke and anshika uh we are we we you know we've always met professionally and said our hellos and smiles and and then we were together and of course we're all like minded people because all of us are looking at wellness and we're looking at not just our wellness and you know about m- making money through wellness but about the world being a better happier right. fitter healthier place right so chatting with each other knowing other people's viewpoints sharing your own it was so so healthy and in in such a beautiful way and getting to just know each other's personalities yes you know it was just very beautiful and i think each one of us is going to be grateful to you and oh, sleva so for putting this together for us because had it not been uh, you know for you and sleva we would have never had this opportunity to know how wonderful each person is 
That's great. That's really nice. In fact, um, when I asked Luke, what did you think about the trip? He said, the one thing that I came back with was togetherness. And I thought that was so beautiful. He said, like, wow. I mean, and it's very interesting that there were 14 people on this trip and everybody got along with everybody. Exactly. It was such a dream. I mean, the trip was such a dream. There was work, there was play, there was fun, there was everything. And so, I think I mean, you know, that's what humans are supposed to do, coexist yeah. in oneness. Because there is yeah. space for everybody. There's exactly. space for each person. But if we just don't allow our minds to take over and just be, I think, and that's what we all did. We were just being, we were not thinking, we were not planning, we were not, right. you know, we were going with the flow. You said we have to shoot at this time. We were like, okay, let's go shoot. You said we have to go right. watch the dolphins. We said, okay, let's go watch the dolphins. <laughs> you know, go see the stars. Okay, let's go gaze at the stars. It was just, everyone was one. Everyone was doing things together. There was no you, me. It was us. Yes, and I think absolutely. Like what you said, it was absolutely. togetherness, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think, like you said, the world was shocked when they saw you and Pooja together. I think they are in for another big shock when they see four of you together. And when they see the way we are going to party on the 16th, that's going to be the shocker. No, I just hope more than shocking, people just realize yeah, the importance exactly. of coming together. And absolutely. I think if COVID has taught us one thing it needs to teach us is that life is too short. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, everybody can coexist. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, there's space yeah. for everyone. God exactly. has created this universe so that everyone can coexist. And just because somebody else is more successful than you doesn't mean that you're not successful in your own right. Exactly. 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 So, Yasmin, it's been absolutely wonderful talking to you. And like I said, I could probably go on for another hour. But um, I guess... We will just have to put an end to this conversation and take yeah, it we can, further. We can get on the phone time. and get on yeah, for another exactly. hour. Exactly. We can do more of these chats because I'm sure people are really interested to know more about you and get more, you know, learn from you. And um, like I said earlier, also, the very fact that you keep learning is what really keeps you on top of the game. Always. Thank you, Pari. It was a pleasure. See you, darling. Here, and See thank you, you for everything. See you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Love you Bye. Bye. Bye.